Well, Enron's former CEO backed out of congressional testimony earlier this week. Anderson's CEO faced the music in the House Financial Services Committee. Now, perhaps he felt at home considering that Anderson has made campaign contributions to 58 of the 70 members who sit on that committee. But our next guest did not accept a penny from neither Anderson nor Enron. At Tuesday's hearing, he greeted Anderson's CEO with a laundry list of the firm's past accounting transgressions and a suggestion that perhaps the industry should fall under government control, although he did commend Joseph Berardino on one particular subject. Mr. Berardino, I want to congratulate you because I understand that your company was successful in keeping, um, their, uh, keeping Enron from paying taxes for four out of five years, and they received in fact, $382 million in tax refunds through the creation of offshore tax shelters. I wonder if you would be prepared to spread your wisdom to the middle class of this country, the poor suckers who actually have to work hard and pay taxes while you and your friends were able to get Enron to avoid paying taxes. Now, Congressman Bernie Sanders is one of two independents in the House and one of six House members who represent their entire state. He joins us now from Washington. Welcome to Finance Vision, Congressman Sanders. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. I'm glad you could join us. Wanted to start it out first with the investigation here, get that news in here. Um, I understand uh, Congressman Oxley, the chairman of your committee, has uh, put in a subpoena for Ken Lay there. Is he going to show up? And I believe the date is February 14th. Well, your guess is as good as mine, but he indicates that he will show up, and we look forward to seeing him. Now, I understand a lot of people expect him to take the fifth. If he does take the fifth, will it be in a way like David Duncan did, where he takes it a couple of times and then he's dismissed? Or could he could collect, uh, take the fifth selectively and you guys can get in a few questions that he might, in fact, answer? Well, my own feeling is that this very brave guy who has caused tremendous harm for his employees, has ripped off the government, uh, I think he should face the music, and I hope he has the guts to stand up there and answer some very hard questions. Do you have any idea yet what kind of questions you're going to ask him? We're working on it, but trust me, uh, my job is to ask him questions that he would prefer not to answer. Okay. Now, yesterday's testimony, it seemed like uh, Berardino wanted to focus on some changes to help improve things in the future there. Um, did you get anything substantive out of the hearing yesterday that perhaps gave you some suggestion that things might be better down in the future? Not really. I think the, the issue that you have here is that uh, the Arthur Anderson people themselves uh, have been involved in a number of scandals. People should not think that the Enron situation is the first. Uh, they were fined by the SEC $7 million. They reached an out-of-court settlement uh, for a very large sum of money. They're involved in a crisis with uh, a very large company in Asia regarding a bankruptcy. Uh, this is a company that does not have, in fact, a very, very good track record. One of the issues with regard to the accounting people that we're looking at is many of these people, like Arthur Anderson, not only act as independent auditors, but at the same time, they act as consultants. And there is an inherent conflict of interest in that. And the issue that I tried to raise yesterday is who is going to represent the pension funds? Who is going to represent the independent investor who wants an objective, honest analysis about the financial goings-on of a company as opposed to an accountant that in fact is being paid and may be in on the workings of the company. Now, Congressman, I, Enron obviously has collapsed. It's filed for bankruptcy there. Anderson's image has been uh, severely tarnished. Do you think the free markets will take care of these issues in the way that a lot of people are saying? I kind of think there's going to have to be a heavier role for government. I think that there is an inherent conflict of interest between an accounting a company that is paid by the, the, the company, uh, and, and you have situations where if, if the company is cooking the books and the accounting people are honest and saying, hey, this is wrong, they're going to get fired in many instances by the company itself. So I think ultimately the SEC and the government is going to have to play a stronger role in making certain that when we hear about financial reports that they are honest and they are accurate. Now, as you mentioned, a lot of people talking about stripping away the consulting from the auditing arm there. A lot of the uh, uh, big five accounting firms, uh, KPMG, Anderson itself, and now PricewaterhouseCoopers have spun off some of those units in uh, initial public offerings or Pricewaterhouse plans to. Is that not enough at this point? No. I mean, obviously what they are doing is taking that action in order to avoid the Congress from going forward. Uh, and they hope that by doing that, 
Congress will not proceed uh, in a way that I think Congress has to. All right. Now, what about this suggestion of perhaps rotating the uh, auditors and or perhaps selecting from a pool of auditors and uh, trying to make it more blind so they're not beholden to the customer? Well, I think that's a step in the right direction. But ultimately, what you have to have is a situation where an auditor, uh, whoever that might be, can render an honest judgment without being financially penalized. Uh, and I kind of think uh, that ultimately uh, the SEC and the government are going to have to play a stronger role. But one of the issues here, and I think what is very important about the whole uh, Enron situation, is so many issues are touched upon. It's not only accounting. It's not only pensions. Uh, I think this touches on uh, the issue of the privatization of Social Security. I think for many years people said, hey, all we have to do is invest in the stock market, and we're all going to earn 10, 10, 15, 20 percent a year, let's privatize Social Security, everybody becomes rich. I think people are, are taking a harder look uh, at that. This issue of Enron and Arthur Anderson, and you mentioned this at the beginning of this program, touches on campaign finance reform. Arthur Anderson, Enron, tremendous amounts of money to uh, members of Congress and to the Republican Party and some to the Democratic Party. That tells me, and it's not obviously just these two companies, big money interest is flooding Capitol Hill which is why, in fact, we talk about tax breaks for millionaires uh, rather than raising the minimum wage and many other issues. Con this speaks to the issue of campaign finance reform. Congressman, the viewer questions are coming in. I had one more question for you on the political implications here. Obviously, it has an implication for the energy policy there as well, and also the stimulus with the repeal of the uh, minimum tax, corporate min uh, alternative minimum tax there. Do you think that is playing an issue in, uh, in Daschle's decision last night to cancel the stimulus uh, package? Well, as you know, ironically, uh, in the re first House Republican stimulus package, uh, Enron itself, there were billions of dollars being given away to large corporations as part of a so-called economic stimulus plan. And in fact, if my memory is correct, which it is, Enron was going to receive itself over $200 million in economic stimulus. Uh, so I think that out of this whole process, there probably will be a harder look at corporate America. I think many people think then Enron is not the only company that has been cooking its books. More may uh, yet come. Uh, and that, in fact, giving tax breaks uh, to large corporations when that money is ultimately coming out of the Social Security Trust Fund does not make a lot of sense. All right, Congressman, we've got a viewer question for you. It's from Raul Villarreal. Do you believe that Enron manipulated the market last year for natural gas, causing the price to the end consumer to skyrocket only to try to make more money off of greed? Absolutely right. I mean, I think that's what all the evidence suggests. People in California, small businesses in California and elsewhere, really suffered huge, outrageous increases in their electric rates. Uh, Enron's profits went off the wall. This touches politically in, 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 in this way. Uh, there were people in California and elsewhere who appealed to the Bush administration, please do something to protect the people of California. Needless to say, Enron, with its very strong uh, contacts within the Bush administration uh, urged the, the Bush people not to do anything, which ultimately is what they did. Okay, another big issue is confidence on Wall Street. We got a question from MK. What about Wall Street analysts, supposedly watchdogs who are compensated by investment banking rather than the recommendations? What changes do you propose? Well, I mean, that's an, an, an ongoing uh, a problem. Uh, what this speaks to is the same issue as, as the accounting issue is how does the average investor, uh, who is going to protect the average investor, who is prepared to take a risk, but at least wants an honest assessment uh, of the merits and the strengths of a company. Uh, we have seen people uh, in companies um, telling people to buy stock when, in fact, they profit to the degree that stocks go up. Uh, and I think Congress is going to have to take a hard look at that and just make sure. If you want to invest in the stock market, everybody knows there's a risk. That's fair enough. But people should have a right to get an honest accounting about the weaknesses and strengths of the company. All right. Supposedly a Regulation FD was supposed to help that. We've got a question from Mark. He says Regulation FD, or fair disclosure, has been under fire. Do you see Congress doing anything to ensure that the public has access to full disclosure? Absolutely. I mean, I would say that, again, if there's a silver lining in uh, this Enron uh, scandal, uh, that will be one of the results of it, that people should have a right to full disclosure and a full understanding 
you know, about the strengths and weaknesses of any company that they're prepared to invest in. You know, one of the, it hasn't been talked about a whole lot. You know, we focused on, on the workers in Enron who have really lost their retirement savings. That's a tragedy. But don't forget that there have been pension funds representing huge numbers of workers all over this country, including my small state of Vermont, where we lost $4 million in Enron. These are pension funds representing workers' retirements that lost uh, over uh, a billion and a half dollars. Now, another big issue coming out of this is the Energy Task Force. We touched on that there. The GAO is going to sue the White House. Um, does the White House have a right to protect its sources? I mean, it seems like it's no big secret that most of its sources are bigger businesses. What's the big story here? What's the surprise? Well, the, the, the special irony here is this was a very similar to issue where all the Republicans went after Hillary Clinton because she had put together her health care task force in quote-unquote secret. And this was the worst thing to do. Who did you meet with Hillary, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, the Clinton people said, okay, here it is. Uh, energy issues are obviously enormous for this country. How do we break our dependence on midi soil? In my view, how do we move toward a sustainable uh, and, and non-polluting type, uh, non type of energy? How do we get more miles per gallon for our automobiles, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, the concern here, which I think most people, as you uh, indicate, assume, is that the Vice President Cheney, who headed this task force, was really surrounded by people like Enron and other large oil companies who are more concerned about the status quo, uh, burning more and more oil, going into Anwar, rather than, than moving off of fossil fuel into sustainable energy. So I think it's, it would be interesting to see the role uh, that this big money played in developing the Bush energy policy. That presumably is something that the uh, Bush administration does not want to share with the rest of us. I think uh, that they should. We have less than 20 seconds. Do you think the Senate will do to the energy plan what it did to the stimulus? I hope it does. I think the Bush energy policy is a disaster. We have huge potential in this country to move to safe, inexpensive, sustainable energy, and that is the direction that we should go. All right. Thanks for joining us, Bernie. Thank you. All right. That's Congressman Bernie Sanders, independent of Vermont. You're watching the most popular video news site on the web, Yahoo Finance Vision.